Hey, hope everybody's doing well. <clears throat> so a very different kind of platinum pinfall. I'm going to tell three stories, um, which were invoked. The idea of these stories were invoked by various stories that I've covered over the last few days. So we're going to get Disco Inferno. I'm trying to figure out which one. The Disco Inferno story is going to start. Uh, Mr. Anderson and Jasmine St. Clair. I think I'm going to end with Mr. Anderson because it's the most bitter one. <laughs> um, all right, the Disco Inferno story. So when I started the school that I myself would run, it was take you back to the year. So it was 2001, so it was 20 years ago, more than. Um, we opened around 9-11, which was a disaster, right? So I'm going to have my big open house, the students that I had already signed by taking trips to Atlanta from Colorado previously. So I signed up a bunch of people, um, but I was really counting on the D Delta Airlines who had this incentive program for their employees to... If they wanted to train in pro wrestling, Delta would cover it. And I had a bunch of people signed up, but then De Delta canceled that. So that was more than 20 grand I was counting on that wasn't happening. But nonetheless, I surged forward and got two different wrestling rings, which were shit, but that's another story. Um, and then part of the thing was, you know, come in on that open house and meet Francine and Disco Inferno. So Disco Inferno was local to the Atlanta area. And my theory, you might be going like, why in the fuck would you hire Disco Inferno? Um, it was twofold. One, WCW just folded. <clears throat> so he was actually kind of prominently featured on WCW. But more than that, he was local. And more than that, he was connected to Vince Russo. He was like Vince, Ru one of Vince Russo's guys. And so I was quite sure that Vince Russo was going to get another job in wrestling. And I thought Disco Inferno being around would help that. There were a bunch of reasons. Um, paid Disco his money, at least the first half of the money. And he came in. And now we were still scrambling to get stuff together. Literally building those rings. They were wooden rings um, as we were doing stuff. But there were students there. And so trainees, I guess. And so it was like, okay, Disco, do your thing and buy me some time while I do this other stuff. Literally sat in a chair, crossed his legs, opened up a newspaper and did nothing. It's like you're getting paid a lot of money. All you have to do is talk to the wrestlers and get them excited about the school and instead when he would say stuff it would be stuff like like oh man there's a lot of wrestling schools around you know it's like i'm paying you motherfucker talk to these motherfuckers i shouldn't have to tell him what to do it's just like you're here to fucking generate excitement interest and he didn't do any of that shit. So I didn't fucking have him back. And then he was mad because it's like, give me the other half of the money. And it was just like, fuck you. <laughs> like, literally all you had to do was just talk to people and be cool. But he couldn't be bothered. I'm, I will never forget the fucking opening of the newspaper and reading. Francine, unfortunately, who was supposed to be there um, for the benefit of the women, of course, um, couldn't make it because 9-11 flights and all that stuff was canceled. So that one I totally understood. Um, the disco fucking inferno. Okay, Jasmine St. Clair. So those that don't know, Jasmine St. Clair was a porn star whose most notable thing was at one point she did the world's biggest gangbang where more than 300 guys had sex with her one after another. And she was dating the blue meanie and so one of my last forays in the indies was a mixed tag match with my tag team partner who was a woman of of who became who got one of the last great developmental deals with ovw actually so we were a team 
um, and I would always just get beat up and be the mouthpiece, and then she would shine, which made sense. Like, she was the one who was trying to get signed and did end up getting signed. But we're going to take on Jasmine St. Clair and the Blue Meanie. Now, Jasmine St. Clair, you know, uh, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to go out there and generate heat, of course. And I don't even remember what state this was in. This was on the East Coast. I was Colorado-based and did a lot of stuff in the Southwest, but I would make forays everywhere. I've been to all 50 states. And um, so we're somewhere pro probably close to Philadelphia or whatever, Blue Meanie Land. And I was like, okay, what? I, I was courteous enough to like, what am I allowed to say? And they go like, oh, dude, you're, you're building up the main. Like, say whatever you want. <laughs> Why you would ever tell me that, I have no idea. But they told me, say whatever you want. So I went out there, uh, introduced my tag partner, and, uh, you know, she's a stunner. She's fucking great looking. So crowd was already like, oh, my God, we're going to get to see this chick and Jasmine St. Clair. It's going to be nuts. Um, I come out there, and I have, like, a number, like 200 whatever, uh, like a sign around my neck. And so some people in the audience kind of knew where I was going, but some were just like, what? And I was like, and I'm like, you know, this is, this is my Nikita. This is, she's so great. Nah, nah, nah. And then I talk about myself and I go, see Jasmine and St. Clair and I already knew each other. <laughs> so because she'd done the world's largest gangbang and I was just like, we had met each other. And then I, so I tell this ridiculous story of how Jasmine St. Clair is like the worst lay I ever had. Etc. 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 So the crowd is like going nuts. They're just like, oh, oh my god, this guy's fucking crazy, and blah 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 blah. And and the thing was, I would say all this horrible stuff, but I would always give it back to you in the ring. But apparently, Jasmine St. Clair was legitimately angry. So in in a going to business for herself moment, at one point she when it, when it made no sense in the context of what was happening in the match. She, like, slipped into the ring and then just, like, fucking from behind just kicked between my legs and got fucking, just fucking kicked, hit fucking taint, dick, balls, just fucking kicked me as fucking hard as she could when it made no sense in the context of the match because she was mad about what I had said. Um, and But to her credit, my fucking tag partner got in there and fucking beat the living fuck out of Jasmine St. Clair, which was fucking awesome. I was fucking hurting. Meanie was embarrassed. Uh, like, afterwards, she was like, I'm fucking sorry, dude. And like, it's like, uh, it is what it is. Um, and, and as a weird side note, Jasmine St. Clair was nothing but a cunt backstage. She was so fucking hard to deal with. Even before I had cut that promo, she was just like fucking aloof and just, she sucked. Um, Meanie was fucking nice as shit. I think he, I I remember that he gave me extra money, um, but she had kicked me in the fucking dick so fucking hard that it, it actually like fucking turned colors and shit. And I just remember going like, oh my God, if I have to get fucking surgery or some shit, it wasn't that serious, but yeah, fucking Jasmine St. Clair <laughs> and my fucking sign with a number on around my neck. Now, Mr. Anderson. Um, also near the end of my career, he was kind of just kind of making his way in the business. And one of my things was my introduction as lethal litigator that I would do myself. Now, other guys did their own introductions, but nobody did it quite like me. And it wasn't a widespread thing yet. So my introduction would invariably go like this, some variation of this. So I would go, <clears throat> from a much better neighborhood than the one you lived in, weighing significantly less than, if there was somebody I could make fun of weight-wise, I would. Otherwise, I would just say, most of the women here, whatever. So from a much better town than the one you live in, weighing significantly less than your mother, Put your unwashed hands together for the most dangerous lawyer in the country. And then here's the part that's interesting. The lethal! And I'd hold that bitch as long as I could. <clears throat> Litigator! Litigator. 
If that sounds familiar to wrestling fans, it's because Mr. Anderson, or Mr. Kennedy, as he was in the WWF slash E, would go, Kennedy! Kennedy. And he was there uh, for one of my intros and fucking marked out huge. He was just like, that's so fucking great. And da 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 Am I saying he stole it from me? Not necessarily. Ideas pop up in your head for all kinds of reasons. And I've never heard the story of how he how he said, because I'm sure he's been asked in interviews, like, oh, how did you come up with that fucking intro? It's so awesome. I'm just saying, whatever the fuck, I did it first and he heard me do it. In any case, it's my 50th birthday. I'm about to get to bed here, as you can see. Um... Thanks for being patrons. I really fucking appreciate it. One of my big goals is to hit 30 uh, patrons, and we're so damn close. But for those of you who are already patrons and uh, support me and watch this stuff, I really appreciate it. Um, something tells me this is going to be a pretty great fucking year. Hopefully I don't get kicked in the balls. Hopefully somebody doesn't steal my shit. And uh, hopefully somebody doesn't waste my money and read a paper in front of my face. This is my life.